So hey everybody, what's going on? Look, not only is this video going to be for me to test out some new audio settings I'm trying out here in my uh, Go XLR software, but I figured why not do that the best way I know how, and that is talking about something that uh, I could talk about. And that's going to be right now the Adobe Creative Cloud and why I actually think it's a pretty good deal still in 2022 when there's a free option like Kitfilm Express or, you know, the more widely known DaVinci Resolve, or if you want to buy it, the much cheaper DaVinci Resolve Studio Edition. And, you know, uh, compared to Photoshop, why, you know, you could easily go out and buy something like Affinity Photo, Affinity De Designer for your Photoshop and Illustrator alternatives. Or if you want to go the free and open source route, you have GIMP, Krita, uh, Inkscape for vector style things and all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Now, the funny thing about the Adobe Creative Cloud is that I have a severe love-hate relationship with it. And by love-hate relationship, I mean like I would literally buy it for like two days and then think to myself, wait a minute, I have DaVinci Resolve, what am I doing? And then get a refund on my subscription like in a day or two after I use it for one little thing to edit with it. And then I'm like, hey, you know what? I don't actually need this uh, type of software. I'll just sub to it for a day, edit cancel my sub, right? Well, this time here, I'm actually keeping it. And you know, as many of you all out there might know, uh, by trade, I am an IT guy. Like that's what I went to school for. It's what I love doing, building computers. Like that's my bread and butter. It's what I do. But at the same time though, uh, I love editing. Like I, like editing is something that I'm very passionate about. I love it so much. And I just enjoy the whole creative process, whether it's shooting, editing, um, you know, final, uh, you know, you know, finalizing an edit, a cut, whatever you want to call it. I just genuinely love doing the whole process start to finish. I live for it. It's so much fun. Matter of fact, not only am I making this video to test out these new audio settings, but I'm literally making a video right now just so I can edit this to post it because I just love editing that much, you know, and here's the thing. Okay. DaVinci Resolve is amazing, and for it to be a free piece of software, which I still can't believe they offer so much of that for, like, free. And here's the thing. There is a paid version. It's, like, around a $300 paid option. It normally comes with a actual uh, physical toolbox you can use, and it has, like, you know, like, wheels and dials on it and everything and faders and, and stuff like that to really, you know, get into a coloring, audio, editing, all that jazz. And it's a very good deal for that amount of money. It really is. And, of course, you pay it once. That's it. I believe there's a perpetual license to where even if you buy it now – you you'll still be getting upgrades like 10 years down the line with that same license that you bought right now. Like that's a pretty good darn deal if you ask me. And uh, if your workflow calls for it, then by all means go for it, you know. But the thing is, though, is that DaVinci Resolve, again, might be one of my favorite editors to ever that I've ever used. I always recommend it to people. But there is a reason why everybody makes the joke like, hey, we can Photoshop that, right? Um, the Adobe Creative Cloud, it's essentially an industry standard. And especially if you work within a big organization, you know, Adobe has some really, really good, uh, you know, team management stuff as well, too. Uh, I know that there's like a DaVinci Resolve server that, ins that it installs on your system whenever you first install it to like, you know, give you a directory and everything for all of your projects. And of course, you could install that on a single centralized server or one, you know, computer, then everybody could edit off of that, like, you know, and that's fine. But with my Adobe stuff, like a Premiere project, as long as I'm editing everything in one folder, I can literally send a copy of that folder to somebody halfway across the world with the Premiere project file. And as long as all of the assets are in the same folder as that project file, they can literally pick right up where I left off on an edit, do their thing, save it on their end and send it back to me and everything will be just fine. You know, uh, you can do that to an extent with Resolve, but it's uh, it, it's it's been very, very hit or miss for me. Then again, though, I don't know if the person I was working with at the, at the time set it up wrong or there was just something that we were missing, but it just was not that streamlined for me. OK. Um, now, again, of course, you know, you could always do your editing in Premiere Pro and then you could export it as an XML and import that into Resolve for your color correction and everything. Because as we all know, folks, uh, Resolve did get its start in the industry as a uh, color correction tool and it was an industry standard for coloring. And to this day, in my opinion, I really do think that 
Resolve has a leg up on Premiere whenever it comes to, uh, you know, it's color grading stuff. It's, it, it's just leaps and bounds better, in my opinion. But Premiere has come a long way. And, you know, it's one of those kind of things where it's like, you can sit there and say that the creative cloud is, is expensive. Like, you know, why would you pay $50 a month for the creative cloud whenever you can get Resolve for free or, you know, spend $300 and get it once and that'll be it? Or Affinity Photo is $50. Affinity uh, Designer is $50 as well. So that's like, what, 500 bucks, And you have some very good industry-leading software that you can get all of your work done on. And here's the thing. You're totally correct about that. But... You have to realize, though, too, is that in that $50 monthly sub subscription for the Adobe Creative Cloud, you're not only getting access to Premiere, Photoshop, you know, like the basics, but you're getting access to Adobe's entire library of software. And what's great about that is that if you open up a project in one, you could also have it open in another piece of software from Adobe and any changes you make another one you'll see essentially in real time whenever you save it in that other piece of software. Like um, sometimes I'm doing tracking work, you know, like, you know, keying stuff up for like, you know, tracks. Uh, I like to have something go across the screen, you know. And what I will do is I will literally load up my Premiere project in After Effects and I'll have it open in Premiere at the same time. And I'll do my tracking, add the moving title or whatever it might be. And... Whenever I save it in After Effects, because it's linked, I will see in real time what I'm doing in After Effects inside of Premiere. And that is just like, that is just so cool. And again, uh, I know that there is a Fusion tab or Fusion Studio, which essentially is uh, Blackmagic and uh, DaVinci Resolve. It's their own built-in com compositing tool. And that's great. It really, really is. Uh, it's a node-based system. And uh, the node-based system, I think, is actually very good. It takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you do, it's really hard to go back to the, to the timeline uh, compositing stuff that uh, After Effects has had for years now. But once you get used to either one, though, you can kind of bounce back and forth, and it's not really a big deal, you know? But one of the biggest things that I do really enjoy about the Creative Cloud is just that it's the industry standard, you know, like, yeah, a lot of places out there, especially if you're talking about, you know, Hollywood movies and a lot of TV shows, they use a piece of software called Avid. And a matter of fact, that is paid software, but there is a free version. I don't know the name of it, but there is a completely free version of Avid. And I, I, I personally don't like it. Maybe it's because it's one of those things that, well, if you use it for long enough and get used to the workflow, it's way better than Premiere or Resolve. But the first time I tried to open up uh, Avid and get my my workspaces and everything, you know, working right, um, it gave me an anxiety attack. I'm not even going to lie. I'll go sit there and laugh at that because looking back on that now, it was kind of funny. But like everything was opening up in separate windows it didn't want to actually import my footage. Instead of importing it, I was working on the footage from the location that it was at instead of it being imported. So it was like linking to it or something. And just the timeline performance, in my opinion, was very slow compared to Premiere or even to Resolve for that matter. And uh, I, 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 I just didn't like it, you know. And, and on top of that there too, folks, uh, whenever you're talking about spending money, uh, yes, it is a subscription, but you know that that subscription is actually going toward bettering the product, uh, more research and development, R&D, all that jazz to make the later versions of said product just that much better, you know? And, uh, you know, it, there have been so many times where new features in Lightroom, for example, have saved my butt. I can remember a couple months or so ago, I was uh, doing a photo shoot on some of my my friend's dogs, and uh, it was a great time. It was a great time, but I had to keep my shutter speed on my 77D extremely fast because, hey, dogs will be dogs, and because of that, some of the photos were very underexposed, even though um, I had the aperture on my 50 millimeter lens opened up nice and wide and I even had my ISO set to around, I think, oh man, I think like around 3000 somewhere in there. And some parts of the images were still underexposed. So what I did was instead of going into Lightroom or Photoshop and masking everything out by hand, you just 
open the photo up in Lightroom, go to the masking tool, do the auto select and you tell it to auto select the subject. It then scans the photo for you, takes everything in focus, especially people and animals, and it automatically highlights those as the subject. And then you can bring them up, bring them down, do your own color correction separately from the background, you know? And it it, it is just, it like guys, for real, if y'all are photographers out there and you're not using Lightroom, it's worth the $10 a month subscription that you get that with whenever you do the, uh, I think it's called the photography plan. It's like $10 a month and you get access to Photoshop and you get access to, um, you know, like I said a second ago, Lightroom and Lightroom Classic. And here's the thing too, okay, fam, personally, I am never going to use every single piece of software in the Adobe Creative Cloud in my sub subscription. And I know that, you know, personally, I use it for Photoshop, Lightroom, I am learning some After Effects stuff because why the heck not? And of course, Premiere. But the way I see it though, is that the Adobe Creative Cloud subscription cost for just Premiere Pro is $20, okay? And then if I wanted to add Photoshop and Lightroom onto that, that's an extra 10, okay? Well, that's a little far cry from the 50, that the Creative Cloud sub normally is. Well, what? There's actually a way to get it cheaper that a lot of people don't know about this here. You sign up for the yearly plan and you pay it monthly. And then you just go in there and you say, hey, I'm going to cancel my subscription. And then they will give you an, an option to go from, hey, for the first year, instead of 50, how about 30? And then after that, it's 30 bucks a month for the first year. And that's pretty awesome. So again, you're getting access to every single piece of software Adobe has ever put out for $30 a month which in my opinion, that's a ton of value. And if you're a creative, you know, if you're a YouTuber, Twitch streamer, just make content in general, uh, I really do think it would be in your wheelhouse and, a, you know, a really big ad advantage for you in the industry. And, you know, it's even kind of funny too, folks, because the reason why I always tell people that if you want to get involved in, in this scene it would be very beneficial for you to learn the creative cloud, even if it's just the the uh, the, uh, the uh, main apps, again, like Photoshop, Lightroom, After Effects, and of course, Premiere Pro, it's, uh, you know, as, as especially Photoshop and Premiere Pro. I can remember a few months or so ago, I was looking for freelance video editing work just because I was bored and I wanted something to do, right? Well, every single application I looked at, like literally... 100% of the applications I, I looked at, uh, they said you have to have experience with Premiere Pro. And here's the thing. Luckily, I did, and I still do, obviously. But before I switched to uh, Re Resolve a few years or so ago, I was primarily a uh, Premiere Pro user years ago. So I did have some experience. But at the same time, though, it's like, wait a minute. And I even emailed them. I was like, wait a minute. I know that the the application calls for, you know, Adobe Creative Cloud experience, but I'm really good with Resolve. Would that even be considered for this job? And they straight up told me no, because uh, one, it's a different type of uh, uh, project file format. So I couldn't just send them something and have it work on their end. I mean, you know, you could export the XML, all that jazz, but it's still it just kind of convoluted and it's just not worth a headache. So I totally get that. But again, it's the industry standard that so many production companies out there are using so many just uh, even like small magazine places or just like, you know, uh, your standard publication company, whether it's for movies or, you know, written stuff and they have 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 an online section just like. Anything in the professional world, it's they're either using Adobe or Avid. And uh, personally, I don't really know of any professional, uh, you know, editing houses around here that use uh, Resolve at all. And I really, really wish that more would. You know, I really do. Um, as I said uh, at the beginning of this video, it is one of my favorite editors of all time. I love it so much. But it's just not a skill that people are wanting. Now, maybe for color work, yeah, sure, I could totally see that. But as far as, you know, professional video editing goes, it's Premiere Pro, it's Photoshop, it's Lightroom, it's After Effects. Like, these are the programs these big companies are requiring their new hires 
to learn. And just for the heck of it, I even called up my local community college, the one that I actually went to a few years ago. And I said, hey, um, I know that you guys have classes for the Adobe Creative Cloud, especially for people that are wanting to get into like, you know, editing, film, all that jazz. But do any of those uh, classes, you know, touch on other editors like Resolve, for example, or is it only or do you guys only offer things for the Adobe Cloud or the Adobe Creative Suite? And uh, the counselor told me, yeah, I don't even know what Resolve is. Now, granted, that's a guidance counselor and they are only, you know, required to know the curriculum for the different types of, uh, you know, um, academic plans that they have for people. So, of course, a teacher there might know what Resolve is. But as far as any classes that that college offered, no, it was only Photoshop, After Effects, Lightroom, Premiere Pro, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? So, yeah, hey, you know, thanks for for sitting here, listening to me ramble for nearly 20 minutes. Again, this was just a video for me to just talk, to dial in these settings and test out some new settings here in OBS. But uh, I was just, you know, rattling this stuff in my brain a little bit, you know, like why, I, you know, again, this is you know, I, this should be without saying here. And besides, by law, I would have to disclose this information to you. Uh, but this video is not sponsored in any way, shape, or form by Adobe. They don't even even know who I am, obviously. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just a big fan of their their software. I know a lot of my friends are. And here's the thing, too, folks. Like that does not mean that the other alternatives out there to Premiere, to Photoshop, to uh, Illustrator, whatever After Effects, you know. Um, I'm not saying that, that those are bad pieces of software. No, especially if you're on Linux and you love, you know, like Caden live or pit or pit Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, pit or there's another one out there. What's it called a uh, shortcut, you know? There's a lot of great editors out there, and a lot of them are totally free. Again, Resolve being the number one free one out there, along with HitFilm e Express and the ones on Linux that I just mentioned. But whenever it comes to uh, professional work and just that whole industry... Uh, there is a reason why they all use Adobe products. And now that I'm using them more and more myself, I totally get it. And I'm investing in in, in myself for this year, see what I can do with it. And uh, yeah, I'll see where it goes next year. <laughs> but yeah, for the fam, I love your faces. Hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful night. And I'll catch you all next time.